In this video, I'll show you how to configure affinity rules, DRS groups, and VM overrides on a DRS cluster. So here you can see I'm in my vSphere client, and I have a DRS cluster here. And on the DRS cluster, I'm going to click on configure. And so the first thing I want to show you is VM overrides. So for VM overrides, I can click add here. And I can say, okay, maybe for this app server, I want to create an override. So I'll choose that virtual machine. And now I'll say this virtual machine, I want to change the DRS automation level. Right? My cluster is set to manual, but maybe I want to change the automation level on this particular VM to fully automated so that it can be migrated around my cluster without any intervention from me. Or maybe my cluster is automated and I want to change certain VMs to manual. This is a more likely use case. So I always think about vCenter. Think about your vCenter server for a moment. I'm accessing this vSphere client through vCenter. This vSphere client is not going to be available if vCenter goes down. And what if I have 50 hosts? Well, maybe vCenter is at the blue screen of death and I just need to reboot it. How do I find it? How do I figure out which host to get into to reboot vCenter? That's going to be a real pain if I don't know which host it's running on. So I may want to go to my vCenter virtual machine, set the DRS automation level on that particular VM to manual. That way I'll always know what host vCenter is running on. And, and then at least if that host fails, high availability can still reboot vCenter on some other ESXi host, but DRS is never just going to automatically move my vCenter virtual machine around. And, and that's a good use case for a VM override, is a scenario in which I don't want vCenter to automatically migrate certain VMs. Another good option here are VM host rules. So for example, I'm going to rename a couple of these VMs just for the purpose of illustrating this concept. I'm going to call one virtual machine DC1. That's one of my domain controllers. And let's pretend that this other virtual machine is another domain controller. So at the moment, these domain controllers, if I look at their summary, are running on the same ESXi host. That's not good because if that ESXi host fails, it's going to take down both of my domain controllers. So that's not what I want here. So under VM host rules, I can click add and I can create a new anti-affinity rule. These are virtual machines. I don't want to keep them together. I want to keep them apart. I want to separate these VMs. I want to make sure that domain controller one and domain controller two are always running on separate ESXi hosts. So that's what we call an anti-affinity rule, a rule that DRS will respect to keep virtual machines on different ESXi hosts. So that's an anti-affinity rule. Let's think about another use case. So I'm going to change the name of this virtual machine to app server. And maybe my app server and my web server communicate with each other a whole lot. Right? Maybe they're constantly working together. Well, in that case, I may want to go to VM host rules and create an affinity rule. I'll just call it app and web. And these two VMs, I want them to run on the same host. So that way they can just communicate through the same virtual switch and their traffic doesn't need to traverse a physical network. That's a good case for an affinity rule. Keep these two VMs on the same host. Now let's take a look at some more advanced options with these rules. I'm going to rename my VMs one more time. I'm going to call this virtual machine dev one. And then I've got my domain controller and my web server, right? So I've got three virtual machines. Dev one is owned by my development team. So dev one is my development team's only VM. And I like to try to keep all of my development VMs on this host. That's, a, that's an older host. It's a host that I've de dedicated to development. So let's see how we can make that happen. I'm going to create 
some VM host groups. And so my first group is going to be my dev hosts. These are all the ESXi hosts that my dev team should be using. And I'm going to give them this host. And so that's my first group. And I'm going to create another host group called prod hosts. These are for my production virtual machines. And I'm going to add an ESXi host to that group. And I'll hit OK. So now I've got two groups, right? I've got my dev hosts and my prod hosts. And so I would like all of my development VMs to run on my development hosts and all my prod VMs to run on my prod hosts. So the next step I'll take is I'm going to create a group called dev VMs. And it's going to contain all the VMs that belong to my development team. I'll hit OK here. I've got a virtual machine group and I'll create another virtual machine group. I'll call it prod VMs and that is going to contain all of my production virtual machines. All right. So now I've kind of logically grouped my virtual machines. Right? I've created four groups, one group with all my dev hosts, one group with all my production hosts, one group with all my dev VMs, and one group with all my production VMs. And so now that I've created those groups, I can go to VM host rules and I can create rules around those groups. So I'm going to create a first rule called dev and it's going to be a virtual machine to hosts rule. Basically stating my development virtual machines must run on my development hosts. So that's my first rule. Right? A development VMs must run on my development hosts. And I can create another rule for my production VMs. I'll call it prod. That my production VMs must run on my production hosts. And I'll go ahead and hit OK there. So now I've created rules that are going to ensure that the right VMs run on the right hosts. And these are called mandatory affinity rules. These are required. They cannot be violated, right? So what my rule is essentially saying is that the dev VM has to run on this host. Even if this host fails, this rule will be enforced. If that host fails, and I have high availability configured, high availability won't do anything. It's going to say, you know what, dev1 can only run on this host. I'm not going to reboot it on any other host. So required affinity rules, ones where we specify certain VMs must run on certain hosts, those rules cannot be violated by high availability. I can choose to configure a preferential affinity rule that says certain VMs should run on certain hosts. And with that type of rule, DRS will live by this rule. DRS will keep the dev VMs on the dev hosts, the production VMs on the production hosts. But if a host fails and I have a preferential affinity rule specifying that certain VMs should run on certain hosts, high availability can violate this rule to get those virtual machines back up and running. So that's the difference between a required affinity rule that's saying certain VMs must run on certain hosts or a preferential affinity rule that can be violated by high availability if there is a failure. And I can also kind of go the other way here. I can say certain VMs must not run on certain hosts or certain VMs should not run on certain hosts. I can create those sort of preferential affinity rules the other way around as well. So those are some of the rules that we can create here inside our DRS cluster to control which VMs run together, which VMs should stay apart, which VMs can run where. If you're creating a DRS cluster for the first time, what you want to do is really think carefully about which VMs are redundant with each other. Do I have multiple database servers that are part of a cluster? If so, 
I need an anti-affinity rule so that they don't run on the same host. Do I have multiple domain controllers? If so, I need an anti-affinity rule to make sure that they don't run on the same host. Do I have certain virtual machines that I need to know which host they run on? If so, I can create a preferential affinity rule binding them to a certain host unless there's a failure or I could even use a VM override to change certain virtual machines automation level to manual. So these are all critical things that I need to think about prior to basically turning over the keys to DRS. Like for example, let's say that I had a self-driving car. Well, there are certain rules that I want to set up in advance before I get in a car and let it drive me around. Don't smash into other cars. You know, don't drive off a cliff. That's the same thing with DRS. I'm basically putting my cluster on autopilot. I may want to think about everything that could go wrong when I let DRS take over. Is it going to migrate VMs that should be separate and put them together? Is it going to move VMs that really need to stay on one host? Maybe there's VMs that their licensing requirements require them to stay on the same host. I need to think about those things prior to just cranking on DRS and letting it go.